When dealing with mirrors, um, it's important to be able to understand the law of reflection. So what happens is to be able to understand that a ray of light, so so some kind of an object that's that's making its way towards a mirror and the direction in which it's actually coming in. So what we're going to draw is we're going to draw a um, perpendicular line to the mirror. So here it is. So this is going to be pretty much um, what we refer to as the normal. And what we're going to have is we're going to have some kind of ray of light that is going to come from this side and it's going to hit the mirror at this point. Okay. So this is the direction in which the um, this ray of light is going to hit the mirror. So it hits the mirror and we have, as we said, this perpendicular line which we, we call the normal. Now, this incoming ray of light is referred to as an incident ray. And so this incident ray is going to represent the, um, the, the, the light that's coming towards the mirror in this direction. And what's going to happen is it's going to create some kind of an angle here. And the angle that we're measuring is an incident angle. So this angle, this angle of incidence is what can be measured. And so with this incident, uh, this, this angle of incidence and, or this incident ray that is coming in is going to get reflected in the same well, not in the same direction, but in, in, it's going to pretty much bounce off the mirror. Let's uh, use a straight line. It's going to bounce off the mirror. I'm going to try to create it as accurate as possible. And it's going to reflect in this direction. And this is referred to pretty much um, as an angle of reflection. And so this... Uh, or sorry, this is a, a, a reflection line, what should I say? And so it's pretty much very similar to bouncing a ball off the wall, right? When you, you bounce it off the wall at a certain angle, it will bounce off provided that the, the surface is exactly flat. And that's what we're looking at uh, with regards to a mirror. We're thinking of it as a flat surface. And so the angle in which it will reflect is referred to as an angle of reflection. And we're going to designate it by that angle of R. So what happens is pretty much this relationship of these two angles um, is very important when dealing with properties of light because we want to understand how you know does light um, get reflected off certain images so how does an image appear when we're looking at um, at mirrors right so what happens is this angle that's coming in gets reflected in uh, in in, a, in a, at an angle that is exactly the same as that angle of incidence as the angle that it's coming in and notice that we're measuring the angle with regards to the normal and not with the actual surface. So pretty much this relationship is what's reflective of this law of reflection, right? So pretty much the law of reflection states really that the line reflects off a surface that this angle of incidence, right? And we're gonna use um, theta as to represent an angle. So the angle of incidence, right, this theta of i, which is whatever angle it happens to be. So let's say this angle, um, this angle i, right, this theta i is, let's say, at a 35 degree angle, which means that the reflection, right, so the angle of reflection, oops, or theta of the reflection is exactly equal. 
So when light reflects off this surface, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. And that is pretty much the law of reflection. So we're going to use this theta symbol here to represent angle. And so this is an important property of light when dealing with flat surface reflection. And of course, when dealing with mirrors, particularly. Looking at, uh, let's say, our, our self in the mirror, right? So here, let me just kind of draw a head and our eyes here. Got a nose just to kind of not make it as freaky. And here's our body, right? And where we're looking in a mirror, and here, let me uh, draw, let's say, our mirror. All right, so here's our mirror. And we are looking at, uh, at this mirror. And so what we're doing is light is now going to make its way from the mirror and actually hit the mirror. And it's going to hit pretty much at an angle um, at, well, at the same angle. So here is pretty much the direction in which uh, the light is actually going. So it's making its way this way. It's going to hit the mirror and reflect towards um, our eyes so we are able to see it, right? We've got uh, our light rays also, another light ray pretty much making its way, let's say, in this direction. And it's going to, um, let's show some arrows to show that it's going in this direction. And it's going to reflect, again, to our eyes so we are able to see um, the actual image. Right? And so the angle in which it's coming, it's exactly the same. So this enables us to be able to see an image that appears as if it is behind, please excuse my dogs, uh, that is behind the mirror. So it's almost as if we're looking through a, um, a window and we are able to see. And so why are we able to see it? Well, because we've got, right, from these reflections, we're able to see this image appear in the window and it's all because of the way light reflects uh, off this surface and this mirror re being referred to as a plane mirror because this mirror is referred to as a flat surface um, that enables us to see this image. So it's not really possible to catch this image, right? To, because this image is really technically behind the mirror. So this is pretty much referred to almost as a virtual image. It's not a real image. It's a virtual image. Because if we were able to put a place um, some kind of a screen, right? If, let's say we're able to put some kind of a screen Right? We are not able to capture, oops, we are not able to capture this image on that screen. We cannot reflect it. So the only reason we're able to see it is because we're catching it on that mirror. Right? But in fact, the real, where that image really lies is behind the mirror. I could not place a screen back here and capture that image because that's what we refer to as virtual images. And we'll talk a little more about them uh, when we're actually trying to draw out some of the um, uh, some of the ray diagrams that we're going to see um, in uh, later on. So when we refer to this virtual image, this virtual image is pretty much an image, right? That is formed by rays, right? And these are here the rays that actually do not pass through the location of the image. So here is where our object actually is, right? On this side on this side of the mirror. 
and the image that is appearing is not on this same size. The image is actually appearing behind the mirror. And so anytime you have an image that appears because of ray, these rays that form behind the mirror, you have what we call a virtual image.